you're a mom, you're home with kids, it's so easy to just take a little bite of this, a little bite of that, finish your kid's plate. Satiety is so much more important than willpower and that has been life-changing. Hey there, Hillary here from Old World Home. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you 10 healthy habits that have truly changed my life as a busy mom of four. Our days and lives are very full right now and I have just found that these 10 healthy habits have really grounded me and given me so much vitality, if you will, and energy to tackle my days as a mom of four. Back in February, I shared a video about how I cut out sugar for 30 days, refined excess sugar out of my diet for 30 days, and I did a whole video about how that experience went. And now I'm just living in the after effects of it. Limit or remove sugar from my mornings. I used to be someone that put, you know, sugary, uh, syrup in my coffee and then I would have you know a carb with some syrup on it and fruit and it all seemed in theory kind of healthy-ish but I knew that it was adversely affecting me personally so I really made it a goal to remove sugar from my breakfast in the morning and that has been life-changing so in my coffee I put cinnamon and heavy cream that's it and then I usually have eggs and some sort of meat or cheese and that is pretty much my go-to breakfast most days of the week and i really try to not start out my day with sugar i do feel like i need to throw a disclaimer in the beginning of this video though that this is simply what has worked for me i am not telling anybody what to do i'm simply sharing these healthy habits that have really improved my life. I'm just a mom who wants to feel her best and have energy for the day, and this is what has really benefited me. I wanna break away for just a couple minutes to share with you today's video sponsor, ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a subscription service that delivers high quality meat straight to your door. All of their products are humanely and sustainably sourced, and right now they have a promotion for the back to school time, where new members receive one pack of gluten free chicken nuggets, six grass-fed beef burgers, and one pound of uncured hot dogs in your first box. I chose to order a custom box this time. I had one beef brisket, a pack of ribeye steaks, one pork loin roast, a two pound pack of ground beef, boneless chicken breasts, and a beef chuck roast. I have received a few different orders from ButcherBox in the past. Everything has been so delicious, so high quality. I know that I am feeding my family and myself high quality meat that is giving them such good nutrition and protein. So with this order, we did already make pulled pork sandwiches, barbecue shredded pulled pork, which was delicious, super lean and really tasty. And I did also make chicken parm with the organic chicken breast. The steak is delicious. We like to sometimes save those for date night, but everything we've had from ButcherBox has been phenomenal. The cost I find to be incredibly cost effective. It's being delivered straight to you. They're doing all the sourcing, all of the working with the farmers to bring you a quality product. Each meal comes out around five, six dollars for our family. So that is such a bargain. And I know that again, I'm giving them high quality protein, especially for my kids as they're growing, for my husband and for myself. This definitely works into the healthy habits that we are trying to implement in our family. So again, if you are interested in trying out ButcherBox or if you are heading back to school, be sure to click my link down below and check out their promo going on right now where you can get one pack of the chicken nuggets, the burgers, and the uncured hot dogs in your first box. Tip number two is that I drink tons of water. I have a large water, you know, water bottle and I refill it probably four times a day minimum and I just feel so hydrated. It, I mean, it's summer right now, so it's a little bit easier to drink that much water. And I do put lemon in it. I'll put in some lemon, like half a lemon, squeeze it in, and then just leave it in all day and just refill with water throughout the day. And water is just so incredible for your body. It is so important to, you know, flush out different toxins and to hydrate your cells. And it is just 
so good for you. So aside from two coffees a day, I am pretty much only drink water. Tip number three is that I have added in more fat into my diet while simultaneously removing more sugars. So I know this kind of goes a little in line with like the keto way of eating, which I wouldn't say I'm keto. I honestly don't even know all of the science behind it. But I do know that adding in more fat into my diet has been completely, you know, counterintuitive to what I have always thought growing up. I was kind of chubby as a kid and, you know, definitely even into adulthood was carrying around extra weight after, you know, each baby. I did often feel hungry because when you're sometimes trying to eat healthy, you're limiting certain things in your diet and your body is craving some kind of fuel. So a lot of times I would turn to sugar because I needed some fuel, my body needed something to burn. But now I actually incorporate more fat into my diet. So full fat dairy, like cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, butter, heavy cream. This is what works for me. I know this is not for everybody, but I just have found so much more satiety. You know, I'm more satiated when I am having that delicious fatty, you know, flavor in my food, which goes along with my next tip is that satiety is so much more important than willpower and so much more powerful than willpower because my willpower can be good sometimes and then not so good other times and when my body is satisfied and it's satiated with food and fuel i truly truly i know it's not easy to believe but i do not crave sugar anymore after cutting it out for 30 days and then reintroducing it, I truly don't crave it like I used to. It's so much more sustainable throughout my day versus trying to simply have the will to choose to make the right you know, food choices. I'm actually not even interested. I'm not craving anything because I'm satisfied. This also ties in with number five is that I don't snack, which again, used to be a very common thing, especially when you're a mom, you're home with kids. It's so easy to just take a little bite of this, little bite of that, finish your kid's plate. And then when I would sit down to a meal, I wasn't even hungry because I had been snacking. So I do not snack anymore. I have a pretty consistent eating rhythm. So I have a consistent breakfast, a lunch, I have an afternoon coffee time, and then I have dinner, and that's it. I don't feel the urge to snack ever because I'm eating these full fat, full protein, you know, veggie, like all the good stuff at my meal time that I, you know, am perfectly full and content until the next meal. Tip number six is that I have learned through this process how much of an emotional eater I was and probably still am to some degree where I realized how often I was grabbing for sugar or a treat or something because I was having an emotional response to something. I was stressed out, I was frustrated, you know, I had been a long day, I was tired and now I realize that if I am feeling kind of snacky either like in the afternoon or in the evening I know that I'm probably either tired which honestly is like the number one I have four kids and you know mama gets tired sometimes and I know that if I just laid down and rested on the couch for 10 minutes I, that feeling would pass. My body is craving some energy because I'm tired. So instead of pulling for something sugary or carby or something like that, I know I can just sit down and rest for a few minutes. Or if it's at night, I just know I need to go to bed. I'm tired. Your willpower is not gonna cut it if you are having an emotional situation. Your emotions are gonna override it and you're gonna pull for whatever it is that you that you want to make yourself feel better versus if your body is truly satisfied you know that you truly had a whole you know meal that had all the calories and nutrition that you needed you know that it's not hunger that you're feeling you're just being emotional or you're tired tip number seven is that we do not keep any kind of junk food in the house and this is 
not even just for my sake this is for my husband and my family as well we just truly if we want a snack or we want you know cookies cake something like that we just make it i would so much rather have it be homemade my girls are really into baking now so they love to bake so it's not that we don't have them in the house i just don't buy them so i'm kind of steering clear of like the processed packaged snacks in our home for the most part as we get back into the school season some more packaged things will come back into the house it's fun for the kids to bring that to school but when we're just home every day it's just not part of our pantry we don't have cookies or chips or things that i can go and grab when i'm feeling emotional when i'm feeling stressed and if i really feel like i want something then i have to make it which is either going to deter me or i'm going to wind up making something that is at least homemade and from scratch and enjoy it that way if there is something in the house or you know we had a, a birthday or a gathering and there were some leftover desserts or something i'll have that in the afternoon and enjoy it then rather than wait until after dinner where i just i don't want to be eating more than i need to in the evening i would rather just have it in the middle of the day while i'm still up and moving around so i definitely still have you know sugar i still enjoy treats from time to time it's just not every day and if i do have it i try to have it in the afternoon this next tip is not actually food related at all, but it is something I feel that has brought health to my life in, you know, not just a food related way, but that is reading. I know I have shared here on my channel how much I enjoy reading and I have really gotten back into it and I feel like it is part of my, you know, healthful evening routine where I'm kind of winding down for the day. I have my things that I do, you know, take a shower, do my skincare, put on some nice pajamas, get into bed and have a, a good book to read. It helps me to have better sleep at night where I'm not looking at a screen right before I go to bed. Point number nine is that I have an afternoon coffee and quiet time every day. And I have done this ever since I had my very first baby when she would nap, you know, that was kind of the beginning of quiet time. And now here we are nine years later and i have four kids and we still do quiet time every afternoon where you know the baby or the toddler is sleeping i'm able to have a coffee everyone gets like a little a little break a little quiet or a little independent playtime reading time whatever it may be it is good for everybody in the house to have quiet time and definitely a healthy habit that just truly blesses everybody in the house and then tip number 10 is that i semi intermittent fast which i know is kind of like a trendy buzzword so what i started doing a while ago now is that i just wanted to stop eating after dinner and at first i didn't pay attention to what time dinner ended you know i wasn't like on any kind of strict you know eating window time frame it was just i didn't want to eat anymore after dinner i would still drink water but i was done eating and then i kind of just started paying attention to okay what time do we generally eat dinner or finish dinner what time do i generally eat breakfast and i was noticing that i was going at least 12 hours between meals so if dinner ended at 7 and then i didn't eat again till 7 7 30 that was an easy 12 hour intermittent fast that was kind of you know mindless i didn't really have to put a lot of effort into doing that and then slowly i just started adding on like an hour so i would which honestly was easy because it's summertime we're not having breakfast till 8 30 or 9 so it was you know kind of an easy way to push back that window a little bit more and now i would say most days i do go probably 16 hours you know intermittent fasting but it's it's not a hard and fast thing i'm not like looking at my clock like oh, i gotta wait another minute it's not time to eat yet it really has become very intuitive i have three meals and a snack in the afternoon or a you know coffee time and it is just has given me all the nutrients i need for the day and then during that fasting window is really when your body is doing so much recovery and healing and breaking things down and building things up and just cleaning cleaning out your body you know all your systems need so much work and when we don't give it that rest time to do that work it is more difficult for it to keep up because if we're constantly introducing 
new foods for it to have to then go ahead and break down and use in different ways. It never gets that rest time. So that has just been a really great healthy habit that I've introduced most recently and I can definitely see that continuing even more. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found these tips to be helpful. As always, leave me any of your tips down below, some healthy habits that you have incorporated. And if you are new to my channel, be sure to stick around and subscribe. I'll be talking to you soon. Take care, guys.